Oh shit, okay. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Mark Howe and welcome back to the channel. Firstly, a sincere thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It is very weird having this many people watching me. Anyway, I've been away because I had a bit of a pay job turning this 1.5 meter bar of aluminium into many buckets of these chips. And along the way, I found out I was monstrously inefficient at doing production work. So these are a few of the tips, tricks, and tools that I came up with to make production work on a small lathe a little bit less painful. Let's get to it then. Okay, so this is where it all started. I was initially contacted to make about five of these uh, two-part rubberizing chemical spray guns. And it was actually quite a few parts in the end. They looked simple at first, but once I got into it, I realized that this was very quickly going to be a mini production run for the shop. And they also had quite a few of these internal little features that really uh, needed to be quite accurate and not drill into each other. So yeah, hence the need to make some weird setups and some weird tools to make things all go faster. So I thought I'd share them with you. Okay, so quick tooltip number one was this Stefan Gottes Winter inspired boring bar. He made a really good video on these and pretty much it is just a boring bar with two six millimeter holes in my case, a slot down the middle and a countersunk hole that doesn't break through all the way. That allows you to pinch a round tool bit in there and if you do your grinds pretty carefully, you can actually get them to be indexable. So in my case with the lathe turning in reverse, I had my super high rake turning geometry. That is a 35 F to cut. Then, when I was ready, I could swap it out for this grooving tool, which would allow me to make the thread undercut. And then finally, I could do my left hand threading away from the chuck. This thing was a lifesaver and like I said, it really is just a plain, simple bar, two flats on the top and bottom, and held in a ordinary 101 tool holder. And so that's it, tool tip number one, the Stefan Gottes Winter Boring Bar Holder. Hey guys, whoa, stop the bus. Okay, it's Future Mark here, and I remembered after I had edited this video that there was a point that I really wanted to tell you guys, so here we are from the future to save humanity. The point was that I had been working with these Chinese inserted carbide turning bits, and now those are actually great for steel. You know, they're, they're all right. But watch what happens when I try aluminum. Not pretty. But now, watch what happens when I try a dedicated high-speed steel tool bit sharpened just right for aluminum. Much better. A lot of the time you hear aluminium needs special inserts and most people might not know why. In fact, I was skeptical. I was like, no guys, it's carbide. Just turn up the feeds, turn up the speeds, let's move some metal. But what I was finding is that I had to change these inserts far too quickly because what was actually happening was the aluminium was pretty much coming down on the tip of the tool, welding itself to it and breaking away that chip. So I figured, okay, let's try some high speed steel. Now the grind on this tool is actually nothing special, but what really does set it apart is an insanely high positive rake on the cutting edge. Now what that does is it allows the tool to get up and under the fast moving metal on top allows it to form a really aggressive chip to clear them and actually break them away and um, actually leaves a pretty good surface finish. Now you can really see the point across in the strapanning tool. Notice that really aggressive positive rake. Okay, okay, but enough about that. Let's get back to the other tool tips. Okay, so for tool tip number two, it was raining at the stage, but I found myself doing a lot of turning to a shoulder, whether that was internal or external. So what I would do is I would set a dial gauge on my carriage, dial in what I needed to do, then lock my carriage, set a carriage stop, lock that down. But what I found was that if I had to do it quickly or if I had to do a lot of turns, it very quickly just spiraled way out of control. So I decided to get digital by printing this little caliper mount, which literally just snaps onto my ways like so, gets a magnet on the carriage, and then I can basically have a DRO on my ways. Um, the great thing is it just pushes out the way if you run into it. 
and it comes off easy as well with two magnets embedded into the top side and it really is just basically a 90 degree angle so you could totally make this out of a block of aluminium which i was going to do before prototyping it on the 3d printer and honestly this works well enough that i don't think i'll make another aluminium part for a while so yeah i've left the stl file in the description if you guys would like it now if you're really lazy or you just want to do quick and dirty measurements you can also always just take a normal pair of calipers literally put the magnets to the back and do the exact same thing just i figured these would scratch my ways so you know i went and printed it Okay, so tooltip number three, these aluminium soft V-jaws. Now these were an absolute game changer because one, they allowed me to index the part both vertically, vertically for doing my top down features and have a nifty little stop in the vise and index my part horizontally. Now these were really nifty for me because one, they're not gonna mock up your part because they're nice and soft and two, you are holding your part with three contact points. And unlike a V-block just held in the vise, they are indexable. So initially I did what any good machinist would do is I indexed this part at 45 degrees with my hard jaws back in there and I made this first horizontal cut. I had two parallels. I had a 45 degree setup. I think I have a picture of this somewhere and I'll show you guys that. Now that was all good and well but what I decided to do instead was take one of these cute little two millimeter end mills, strike a groove right down the middle and then proceed to hog the rest of that material out with a carbide router bit, taking quite generous depths of cut. So yeah, that was tooltip number three. Soft vice jaws can really be worth the time that they take to make them. And that you should probably always try and keep a selection of these cheap, inexpensive carbide router bits on hand because they can really help reduce setup times and cutting times in some uh, unexpected ways. So there you go. Now, since we're already at the vise, and I sort of figured this will be a short video anyway, I figured I'd give you guys a bit of a double update. Firstly, this is my Hilma hydraulic vise, and it is an absolute monster. Now, I got this for the princely sum of having to replace a single little ball bearing, and needless to say, this puppy here has been the reason I haven't been as pushed to complete the main vise build. On that note though, as much of a monster as this vice is, this is the main vice. Now as you can see, it is going to be pretty damn huge. And that was because I figured, well, if I'm going to be making my own vice, I may as well make it as big as I possibly want. But to give you an idea, that is sort of the depth of the bed on the Hilma. And that is a flat base bed on the new Kurt coffee vice. Now this actually turned out pretty well. I mean, this is going to be the fixed drawer, which will sit over there. But for this purpose, we're going to turn it upside down for now. And that will sit about so. Then this is the movable drawer. As you can see, the prints came out pretty well. That says MHI, Markow Industries, RSA, the Republic of South Africa. It has the little divot down there with the ball detent cast in there, which is a nice little feature. Now, as you can see, that is a six inch rule, and this is gonna be about a six inch vise. So there we go, guys. Those have been my tips on machining batches apart. This has been an update on the custom vise build. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief midweek video to get caught up to speed on why I haven't been making videos, and I really appreciate your time. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'll catch you in the next video. Markow, out.